It's theCUBE, covering HPE Big Data Conference 2016. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Back to Boston, everybody. Mutisha Dunda is here, he's the founder and CEO, and he's joined by Michael Bishop, who's the CTO of Logit Bot. We're going to talk about Seeking Alpha. Gentlemen, welcome <laughs> Thank to you. the Cube. So, uh, Tell us about LogitBot. Why did you, you know, found the company? What's it all about? Um, so, the short story behind it is that um, I've sort of been in financial services for a really long time. Uh, did my tour of duty across Wall Street, and uh, almost ten years ago now, ended up at a very large market making firm in the Philadelphia area, and was the chief of staff of their proprietary trading business. Uh, what that business was going through at the time was this evolution where people are embracing high frequency trading technology, sort of replacing human traders with uh, automated, automated software. Uh, my company at the time was very resistant to that change and sort of valued the insight that a market maker human could provide uh, during time, times of volatility. Uh, a lot of our competitors sort of threw away a lot of their traders and when the 2008 uh, sort of crisis hit, we were one of the few people willing to be buyers and sellers of last resort in the financial markets. And it was the best year the firm ever had uh, during that period of turmoil. And the reason was uh, human beings could make rational decisions. Uh, you know, if somebody came and tried to sell you a blue chip stock at 80% of off of its value, you know, someone could sit there and say, I, I don't think this makes sense, I'm, I'm a willing buyer. Um, so that, uh, sort of allowed us to basically have a trader not worry about the weeds and focus on the big risky trades and have a machine interact with kind of the low order flow, kind of day-to-day -day order flow. And that is what sort of got me into the space. I left the firm and I joined Bloomberg and I was the head of strategy and business development for five years. And the company is amazing and they've built a business around providing people information. Uh, What's happened in the information business is that people have gone away from static data to analytical data. And so now what we're doing at LogitBot is combining the ability of machines to sort of take the grunt work out of your day-to-day -day job and allow you to focus on high level things and then also provide you with very useful insights using the power of modern computing technology. So we're combining uh, a helper with intuition uh, and an ability to deliver analytical capabilities. So the, the, the money business and the tech business have collided yes. <laughs> in a big way. Yes. And yes. you're taking advantage of that by providing a platform for insight? And yes. Is that, is that yes. right? And, yes. Okay, and you are, are you, are you an alpha geek or are you not an alpha geek? Are you, I, <laughs> I guess I am. Uh, <laughs> and, I, and I say that with, you know, all respect. All respect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I think I am. I wish I were an yeah. alpha geek. I, I, I have a very sort of scientific background. I was an electrical engineer, did a master's in financial engineering. So I, I approach financial markets with sort of that uh, systematic or analytical perspective. Uh, and I think in today's world, it's sort of the one place you can go to in periods where we're in an environment where people have never seen this before. You know, interest rates are negative around the world. Like there's no precedent to a lot of things that are going on. Um, so you can actually apply science uh, to try and understand how markets will evolve uh, given all that's going on uh, using a process. And, and you, Michael, are a platform builder, I, I presume, and a technologist, <laughs> and you create products, is that right? Or as well as potentially an alpha geek. <laughs> yes, and uh, yeah. On, okay, uh, so tell us about your platform yeah. so, that you're building, uh, that you the, built. Yeah. So our platform uh, uh, ingests an enormous amount of data that it has to reason about and uh, uh, distill that down into uh, insights and uh, uh, predictions uh, for our end, our end users. And uh, that, uh, you know, that, Spark and uh, 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 using BigQuery, Google, and TensorFlow, and uh, HP, uh, Haven on Demand to do some entity extraction on the uh, the news that we process. Uh, so lots and lots of volume, lots and lots of data going through. Uh, it goes through the meat grinder. Do you, uh, so, 
uh, so okay, so you, and there's Sounds a lot like of secrets. Every, everything you do is a trade secret. Yeah, there's a lot of secret <laughs> sauce in there. I think at a high level, um, just sort of what to, the way I would explain it is that a lot of information is generally publicly available. You know, large companies are forced to disclose material information. They right. file regularly with the SEC. Mm -hmm. um, and if there's anything material, they actually have to have a press release. You know, so information is generally available, but it's in a format that a lot of people can't make use of given the volume of information. So if we can apply uh, kind of artificial intelligence technologies to extract information, uh, summarize it, uh, find value that is hidden in text, uh, you know, things of that nature, we can kind of give our clients an, an informational advantage. Again, in the financial services world, that is all we trade. The currency in the business is information. Uh, so allowing people to access information easier, faster, better, have a much more clear picture of what's going on in broad markets is obviously extremely useful to So you. it's hidden information that you It's, it's there, surface. but it's it, just not apparent to people. Is it yeah. text mining that, you're, that you so, excel at? Or, or? Yeah, this, that is actually a good core strength of ours. Uh, another one is this notion or t technology that we use, which is a connected graph of uh, the, world's, the world's financial companies, or actually the world's publicly traded companies, and all the important people that are associated with those companies. So as an example, and again, I don't, you could have a technology company that has a supplier in Taiwan that is delivering a component that goes into a phone, as an example. And if that supply in Taiwan starts indicating to its Taiwanese uh, investment community or the regulators there that it has an inventory buildup, right? Uh, you could have a piece of technology that could read that and make an inference about this US-based customer of theirs, right? So in the case of a phone, they could say, oh, these, these phones might, the sales of these phones might be weak because uh, we were expecting the Taiwanese supplier to be selling the components like hotcakes, and it's not the case. So in a previous life, I, I did that for the disk drive industry. I mean, I had the whole supply yeah, chain yeah, yeah, figured yeah. out, and, the, and it took me years and years and years to build. Yes. And it took me a lot of phone calls, a lot of dinners, a lot yes. of drunk nights going yes. out and <laughs> getting information. And I wasn't so drunk, it turns yeah, yeah, out, yeah, but yeah. they were. <laughs> and, uh, and, but it, was, it would have been impossible to scale. Yes. Right? So yes. you figured out a way to automate. Yes, because you can obviously use the power of even you know, technologies like Haven that do text extraction, entity recognition from raw text. So you could have a computer read text and then uh, extract this entity is, sub is, is an entity and it has these, these products and these products are supplied by these other entities and you know, kind of build that graph uh, without having a human being having to you know, collect the information manually. You, you have a, a potentially infinite n uh, amount of data Yes, that, that could that be relevant to what you do. <laughs> yes. So how do you apply big data principles to actually narrow that down and, and find the data that matters? A lot, there's a lot of filtering. Uh, as you might imagine, there's a lot of junk in what you, what you bring in. So there's, a, there's an enormous amount of effort that goes into filtering out things. So for instance, in, with news, we, uh, we're ingesting, I think, 70,000 news sources, sources yeah. which have been curated and ranked by hand uh, for importance and, uh, and reliability, and are, you know, that's constantly updated and checked. Uh, and and you know, there are automated ways in which we filter things out and throw things out. Yeah, the, uh, the other thing I'll just add is that um, the other way we do it is we just try a lot of things. Because again, with a computer, you can almost run 50,000 things and see what actually mm -hmm. is meaningful. So right. that is also another really easy way of solving a problem is you have the ability not to just try one thing, you could simultaneously try 50, 100,000 things and then understand what's really going on based on those 100,000 experiments that you just did. And yep. in, the, in the Haven portfolio, you, you use a little, a, a little bit of Hadoop, a, a lot of autonomy, a little bit of Vertica. <laughs> we are big users of their APIs. So yeah, okay. what they have there is almost like little building blocks for machine learning mm. and uh, nifty things with text extraction. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we like that because you can actually design your own, I don't know, software ingestion yeah, it, platform. 
uh, using allows the us building blocks uh, that we can quickly run experiments on in the new uh, combinations product that uh, they've they've uh, announced. Uh, we had a, a preview. We were able to work with a preview of that, uh, and we think that's uh, uh, that's going to be even more of a force multiplier for us, and uh, it lessens the value, uh, lessens the cost for in time for us to run experiments, uh, uh, and it also pushes it pushes the complexity or eliminates a lot of the complexity of running them uh, down so that we uh, were able to push us down to a data scientist or, or someone uh, who wants to run a machine learning experiment uh, and they can do that with little to no coding involved. Uh, so that uh, that's a dramatic improvement uh, over having to spend you know, a few weeks coding something up. We've got this massive you know, API economy that's developed yes. and, and I would think that, that a company like yours would, would thrive off of that. I mean, do, yes. you, do you plug into a lot of APIs to assemble the data that you that you process? Absolutely, and we also yes. are providing APIs of our own. <laughs> so, yeah. mm -hmm. um, yes, we, just to answer your question, we, we definitely believe in the API world. Uh, we are able to leverage technologies that would have taken a firm like ours maybe decades to develop or even scale. Yes. Uh, so, you know, through the power of APIs, we're able to kind of quickly turn things on and, you know, make the calls or retrieve the information we want uh, very seamlessly. We're, we're at a, a time where uh, through API delivery, it's kind of democratized a lot of these uh, very uh, uh, expensive to uh, expensive to purchase on-premise technologies. Uh, things that you were just out of reach for a small company, even just a few years ago. So, okay, uh, can you give an example? I mean, what kind of data are you able to plug into now through an API? So, I would say, for instance, uh, well, entity named entity extraction at the level of accuracy that we get with Haven on Demand, particularly, uh, is something that uh, even with our very we have a you know given that we have a vast database of entities, uh, you would think it'd be very easy for us to uh, to do the same thing. Uh, it's a it's a difficult problem to tackle and. Uh, HP has uh, yeah. helped us considerably and to add there. to what Michael's saying, so a good example might be, so we're doing this across 120 million things. So that's the first piece of complexity. Yeah. Uh, the second one is, if, you, if you're trying to resolve Apple Inc., the company, and you just read Apple versus the fruit, versus New York City, which is often called the Big Apple, uh, it's a really hard problem for a computer to solve. Um, and so, you, you know, and doing that at scale, again, is also, is not is not is not trivial, and we're doing this across. You know, we're streaming thousands or hundreds of thousands of news articles every hour, and analyzing that data, and then making these categorizations of. I read this piece of information. It was about this entity, a company, uh, and it was taking an action on this other entity, a person or a company, and it was related. You know, so you start connecting the dots. Yeah. It's uh, it's not easy. And those are very, th those steps are critical in reasoning about the data. It's not something that we necessarily need to invent in-house. Uh, that frees us up to work on core algorithms to interpret the data instead of spending all the time trying to disambiguate uh, Apple from the Big yeah. Apple, for instance. Uh, so it makes it, that's a, it, it, our day-to-day -day is dramatically different. Uh, the problems that we solve are dramatically different. We could spend two years working on named entity recognition and getting it, very, getting that very, uh, accurate or we could plug into an API and work on algorithms, uh, financial algorithms that uh, do actually, you know, that matter th to the company. Absolutely. And you sell a subscription? So we are, we, because it's an institutional product, um, the, the, the data is made available via API. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 again, it depends on kind of the application that the information is going into and whether or not the information is going to a human eyeball or to another system or machine. Okay. Uh, so it's a subscription-based business, but it depends again on kind of the and end. It, yes, yeah, so that was my next question, is how is it consumed? And yes. you're saying it's consumed differently by machines than it is by humans. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we, I, we have this, uh, the, for human consumption, we actually have a really nice AI, uh, and he has a name, he's called Rob Otto 
for Roboto, but you know, his name is Rob. And <laughs> uh, Mr. Roboto. Yeah, and he is a fairly intelligent financial analyst. So you can ask him questions about markets, stocks, uh, trade ideas, and he will try to answer you back in a human. So you can have a conversation with Rob, and what he's doing in the background, he's actually doing a lot of financial analysis and coming back to you with a, a response that a human being would expect versus a machine that would want you know, structured data or just analytical information. And you built this. Yes. This is, yes. You guys built, that's really your secret, a big part of your secret yes. sauce yes. as well. Yeah. And, and so it's, in a way, competing with Watson, yes? Is that? Absolutely, yeah. and not necessarily <laughs> well. at the same time. <laughs> the, well, the, the secret sauce. Well, the absolutely is I can, ostensibly anyway, talk to Watson yeah, and yeah, get yeah, a response. Exactly. The not necessarily is Watson doesn't, can't do what Yeah, you, Watson, you, you, Watson you, you, is you. really good in healthcare and a couple yeah. of other industries. I don't know if um, he's been trained up in financial services. And again, we are very, fo that's all we know. I mean, that's sort of our background. Yeah, right. And in machine learning, one of the traps that a lot of people fall into is you think you can go get the best model or neural network and it'll give you the best answer. And what turns out to be the case is that having that kind of context, industry experience, intuition around what's important is really the secret sauce. Mm. So we've spent over 35 years in the business. We kind of know what financial people care about. Uh, and if you asked our machine a question and you asked another you know, piece of amazing AI a similar question, you might be surprised because we tend to be smart. What if you think of sentiment? and you pose to a, a sentiment endpoint that uh, is not trained in financial terminology, uh, and you give it an article that uh, someone has issued shares, a company has issued shares or bought them back, and uh, what is, is it good or is it bad? <laughs> and uh, you know, if you ask a generic one, it, happy <laughs> or yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, they, it, don't, they don't understand. There's no context there. <laughs> it, it has no idea what uh, what that means. And so our, that's something that we have to do in-house because a sentiment, uh, a sentiment endpoint, for instance, uh, is provided as just a, it's a generic sentiment thing. It's, it, you know, it's good perhaps if you're looking for tweets about Jennifer Aniston or something. Yeah, um, right. So in that example, a very simplified example, but happy, yeah, it's not necessary. Necessary. Versus yeah. dilutive, how dilutive, exactly. impact, yes. you know, long term, near term. Yes. Uh, Interest okay. rates yeah. went <laughs> up, and you know, the typical machine learning thing will tell you, oh, this is good. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 Why is the market going yeah, down? Yeah, yeah. And you're like, no, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Uh, right. So yes. yeah, that's kind of so having that uh, specific kind of industry know-how is really important, and you have to instill it into the machine because it doesn't know these things. Now, how do you price? Now, I, I know it's got to be really, really expensive because of the value, but how do you, what's your pricing model? Is it, is it by machine, by user, by? I think it's by analytical category is the best way to think about it. So in the unstructured data world, we have a product that basically monitors news for you, connects the dots, tells you what's important and what's going on and how that information is getting added to our knowledge graph. So that's kind of one category of data. Uh, another one is we have predictive models. So you can actually say, given all these things that aren't conventionally part of an econometric model, say, like uh, sentiment, news, political risk, what central bankers are saying, like how do you capture all of that into a model and then allow me to predict stock returns or you know the price of a specific uh, class of securities in the future. So those predictive models, again, are like a different solution or a different product. So we price by that. Okay, um, more on the company, like uh, how long have you been around, funding? So yeah, we are uh, young, we've been around for about a year. Uh, we are self-funded right now, but we are in the process of uh, actually going through our first uh, round of uh, outside money. Um, so we're talking to people now who shown a lot of interest. New York in VCs mostly? Yeah, mostly in New York, because I think they understand yeah, right. what we're doing and what we're all about. Uh, yeah, and I think there is a pretty robust community around the FinTech, uh, of investors around the FinTech space in New York. How many people are you today? Uh, we're four of us today. Awesome. So, yeah. 
Wow, that's fantastic. And you've got, you, you, you're, you're live in the marketplace, you've got real yeah, customers? We have, uh, yeah, yeah, and we have customers that are testing and using our products right now. So you guys self-funded, um, but, but you're, you're generating uh, maybe not positive cash flow, but cash, right? Yeah, a little, yeah. yeah. And it's, again, like with, with what we're doing and what we found, and even the reason why we invented Rob was because it's still a new field for many people, mm -hmm. and financial services tend to be conservative. Um, so the sales cycle to a large enterprise is obviously challenging, and you have to kind of explain what you do to many layers of decision makers within an organization. So if we can, rather than explain, show value, is sort of the tact that we've taken. Mm. So we're very happy to partner with people and kind of prove out that uh, what we're doing makes sense for them um, I would imagine before we try to commercialize products. With all the experience that you have, though, and some of the companies that you worked with, yes. uh, worked for, you would have uh, a foot in the door at companies. Yeah, it helps. It does yes. help. It does help. The, the, um, I wonder about starting a company these days, and you know, you're four people, and you're building a company, and, and it seems like five years ago that would have been almost unthinkable. Uh, you, are there any infrastructure investments involved in what you do, or yeah, is everything but in the cloud? I mean, Michael can speak uh, to this. <laughs> Uh, well, the, the, having the cloud, uh, having cloud providers changer. is is it's really a game changer. Uh, but we still, uh, would, and it may surprise some people, we still do use bare metal uh, uh, for a, for thirty percent of the infrastructure. And, and why uh, is that? Why uh, performance, Fast. raw performance? Uh, there or, or are there only so many ways to get a terabyte of RAM? <laughs> And it's <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, All the or, caching in the world, you know, GPUs, or <clears throat> thing, you know, or power eights, or th you know, things. There are different types of architectures that you just can't get uh, virtualized uh, at the moment, and so you have to kind of rely on uh, big machines, big metal machines. <laughs> Is there something that you get out of using Vertigo that you couldn't get through any other source? We're not. We're uh, not actually Vertica oh, customers, sorry, yeah, but yeah, we yeah. are HP Aven on demand customers, Aven. So which is a right, sort of right, blend right. of Vertica yeah. and Autonomy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. And Hadoop. Yeah. Uh, and 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 you're disruptive. You're you're disruptive. You're disrupting presumably we're, we're Bloomberg, trying. right? I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, think I mean, I know you probably don't want to say that. But in the, yeah. Well, it's so it's huge and giant, but I mean, this is. Well, we're definitely we're trying to change Bloomberg how people go about doing their day-to-day -day jobs. And how That's do they kind do of that, our right? focus. So they, yeah, they, so they I think pick up the phone. They yeah, and they work in spreadsheets, and they look at yeah, they look yeah. at like things one at a time. You know, so we're trying to change a lot of that, um, where we can automate I what you for, do on a day-to-day -day basis. What we're trying to do here, it, it's very difficult to go deep uh, at scale. So if you're yeah. trying to model a, a high-performing research analyst. Uh, even a high-performing research analyst cannot cover more than a few stocks, mm. uh, uh, maybe well, a sector, yeah. maybe, yeah. Uh, and we're able, and they're only able to revisit that once a quarter, maybe, or when Apple News gets breaks. a giant yeah. uh, fine or something. Yeah. Uh, we're able to do that at scale for everything, all the time, 24 hours a day. Right, they're living in 10Ks and 8Ks yeah, yeah, yeah. and docs and reading right. the notes, and it's just torture. And, and, and we really, burn through yeah. those <laughs> and ingest them, rip no, out no, just No, 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 yeah. bing! Right, exactly, <laughs> filter, 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 yeah. and then we find just what we need to zoom in on, and then that piece of information is either uh, acted on immediately, or it's added to the graph for potential uh, uh, later inclusion. Uh, because it could be part of a very long trend uh, uh, of events where we need to go back and follow the breadcrumbs uh, to a, an original event, uh, and so that's added into the event graph. Awesome, <laughs> we got to go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great story, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for coming yeah, on, yeah. And, uh, and best of luck to, to you guys and it. with the raise, and yeah, yeah, hopefully yeah. see you here next year with yeah. Yeah, for a sure. continued story. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank All you right. guys. Yeah. Pleasure. Thank All you right. very much. Keep it right there, everybody. Paul and I will be back. We're going to wrap up day one here at uh, HPE's Big Data Conference. This is theCUBE. Right back.